Today, we're taking a trip in the D&D Lorium back to 1989 to explore the origins of a word that makes some nerds quiver in their skin-tight Levi's. But worry not, brave adventurer. Retro Roller is here to hold your hand in his even clammier hand as we go back in time to the dreaded origins of Thacko. I'm your host, Retro Roller, and in this video we'll look at the history of Thaco, its development from the core combat matrices, and then I'll share my super secret special sauce recipe of how to make Thaco easy. By the end of this episode, you'll be like a Mr. Miyagi, amazing your fellows with swift strikes and calculations that put Johnny to shame. Okay, that's a lot of mixed metaphors, but you get the idea. You'll be really good at doing a Thaco. Now, as scary as Thaco sounds, it's really just an acronym. Specifically, it's an acronym for Two Hit Armor Class Zero. So what was Armor Class Zero? Why was it so important? And how come it's so darn complicated? To explain that, we need to go a little further back to original D&D and first edition AD&D. Back in those days, Armor Class didn't ascend like it does today. It didn't add up in a nice neat stack. But in fact, it descended. This meant, of course, that a higher AC was actually worse and a lower AC was, of course, better. In concrete terms, this meant leather armor bestowed AC 8, only two better than nothing. Whereas if you're wealthy and sensible enough to outfit yourself in, say, plate mail and a shield, you can reach the heady heights of AC 2. For those in the top math set, yes, that's the equivalent of a modern AC 18 today in 5th edition. Either way, we're just counting away from 10. Why 10? because the math is based on a d20. This assumes that generally a zero or first level character swinging a weapon around has a 50% chance to hit an unarmored opponent who is AC 10. And that works regardless of if you're calculating up as in the modern system or down from 10 as in the old system. Because in AD&D, you could have an AC ranging all the way from 10, absolute worst, all the way down to an epic minus 10. Now, we could go on a tangent here as to why armor class descended in the first place, and there are good design reasons for that. But that's a topic that deserves its own video, which I will link to whenever it exists. But you were still rolling your attacks with a d20, and rolling high was still better. So how did this seemingly unintuitive system work? These old school versions of the game originally used tables for players to cross-reference their d20 roll against an armor class. Here we have a particularly nice example from the first edition AD&D Player's Handbook. Oh wait, I'm sorry, no. The Player's Handbook doesn't include that information at all. As a player in AD&D First Edition, you had to trust your dungeon master to read these tables, interpret them accurately and fairly, and, you know, figure out if you hit. I'm sure that always worked out fine. There were numerous adjustments to the roll each turn, including certain weapons being better against certain types of armor, and shields only being good for defending against a certain number of attacks. See, first edition AD&D was still strongly derived from the original war game, Chainmail. And Chainmail was, well, detailed. And you thought third edition was crunchy. This table approach has a couple of other drawbacks. It means that in theory, the dungeon master has to cross-reference all of the players and monsters' attacks, which will keep changing round to round as they use different monsters, different weapons, and the characters level and change equipment, yada yada yada. So this must have slowed combat down quite a bit, but disclaimer, I started playing D&D in basic D&D and second edition AD&D, so I don't have a lot of first-hand experience of what these attack matrices were like to use at the table, so to speak. And if you do, let me know in the comments below. But there was a solution for this hypothetical long-suffering dungeon master, or at least the glimmer of one. See, designers of early modules who hosted games at conventions, such as Jeff Grubb, have said that Thaco originated from the community as a shorthand way to communicate information in tournament games. 
This makes total sense, as tournament games had a limited playtime and emphasis was on completion. It seems then that this term entered the lingua franca of Dungeons & Dragons communities before it officially appeared in any of the books, and was probably in practical use for quite some time before it finally saw print. Back to the first edition AD&D Dungeon Master's Guide, specifically Appendix E, Alphabetical Recapitulation of Monsters with Experience Point Values. There was a column listed as 2 hit AC 0. This was intended to help out DMs in a pinch, but not meant to replace the attack tables on pages 74 and 75 respectively. The acronym for Thaco still wouldn't appear for a couple of years, and even then not in its classic form. In 1982's RPGA adventure R1 To the Aid of Falks, it appears as Thaco with an O instead of a zero which seems to reinforce the idea that the term was being used colloquially, but maybe not written down so much. Here it is, horribly highlighted by yours truly. There are sources that state that Thaco proper with a zero then emerges in the RPGA version of the basic D&D module 1, Rahasia. But having searched pretty thoroughly through that module to confirm this, I couldn't find it anywhere. And yes, I did look manually in addition to using the search function. But no dice, so to speak. It does, however, appear in UK2, The Sentinel by Graham Morris, where it seemingly appears with the O instead of the zero. Controversy. Thacko finally makes its official rules debut in the basic D&D Beck Me Master Rules in 1985, and is cemented into that line and later modules. Advanced Dungeons & Dragons finally made the move to replace those antiquated attack matrices in the 1989 2nd Edition Player's Handbook. And thus, the circle of life is complete, and we can go rule and have lion babies and sing on clifftops. Oh, but first I promise to show you how to be a Thacko ninja. You don't need to know your opponent's armor class, you just take your Thacko number from the table, like so. If you're a 7th level warrior, you have a Thacko of 14. Now to keep things simple, we'll just use one of my old tricks, and that's to streamline the rest of the adjustments straight onto the Thacko. That's all of your stat bonuses, magic, specialization, whatever. You adjust the Thacko directly instead of doing the math every time. So let's say this character gets a plus one from strength. Bonuses are much harder to come by in second edition because it's not made for little crybabies. Plus one from specialization and plus one because you're a lucky SOB with a magic sword for a total of plus three. Rather than have to add this number every time and complicate things, we simply take this three off of our Thacko. That's right, bonuses come off Thacko, a lower Thacko is better, and we'll soon see why. So base Thacko 14 minus three becomes 11. That's your Thacko with this weapon, sorted. Let's say our fighter, we'll call him Arnie, swings at a snake person. We don't need to know the snake person's AC to make the roll. We roll a d20 and aim high. We roll a 5. Just take that off your Thacko. So it's hit AC 6. For argument's sake, our Snake Man is AC 2. But we didn't need to know that to tell our DM what we hit, and that was AC 6. AC 6 is higher than AC 2, so it's a miss. Let's say Arnie is then hasted and crazy specialised, so he has 4 attacks per round. Let's roll the other 3 attacks. The next roll is a 15. Rolls over your Thacko number mean you hit the negative AC numbers. 15 is 4 over our Thacko of 11, so that's AC minus 4. That's a hit. Arnie rolls an 11 next, which is his exact Thacko, so he hits AC 0. And the final roll is a 3, which is a lousy AC 8. Another miss. So you get it. Just count the difference. If it's under your Thacko, that's a positive AC. If you roll over your Thacko, that's a negative AC. You're literally just counting the difference between what you roll on the dice and the Thacko number on the page. A Thacko of 15 with a roll of 13 is AC2. If you then roll a 17, that is, guess what, AC-2. Now I'm going to have to wrap this up and stop saying the word Thacko before I completely lose track of what it actually means. I've been your host, Retro Roller. Thank you for sticking with me through all of this complex, antiquated nonsense. Please like and subscribe and encourage me to make more stuff about ancient games I no longer get to play but still obsess about an unhealthy amount. If you DM'd first edition or earlier, do let us know in the comments how intuitive you felt those attack matrices were and how you felt about Thacko when it came along. Thanks for watching and remember, keep it retro.